Um, these are the first treatments that have been done in the Eastern Cape, so very significant in that sense. Uh, there has been quite a little, quite a lot of of uh, uncertainty over them, particularly on the safety side of things. Uh, people are wanting to see more rhino being treated before they build confidence in the, the procedure and and the safety and and so on and so forth. So the fact that uh, rhino owners in the Eastern Cape are starting to implement this as an option now. Um, is a sign that, that there is a growing confidence in the safety aspect of it for the rhino specifically. Um, going forward, obviously, we'd like to roll out more of these across the province. And um, the more we do, the more uncertainty it creates for the poachers um, and anyone intending to poach. So I think that's the, the most important part of it, is it just creates another layer of, uh, of uncertainty and suspicion uh, amongst people who are considering poaching our rhino. Um, the rhino Rescue Project was basically uh, born in 2010 when um, my own family had a poaching on our reserve in, in Gauteng. So we lost a fairly old rhino cow to poachers then and decided we had to try and implement some preventative measure to keep the rest of our animals safe. And um, what we found by way of alternatives that were available to us at the time was that most of them were, were largely reactive. You know, tracking devices and microchipping and DNA sampling, those things only really serve a purpose once another animal is killed. And for us, certainly, when we, when we started, the goal was to keep animals alive. And the one way that we thought of doing this was to somehow devalue the horn, to remove the value from the product so that this animal now becomes an unattractive target to, to poachers. And because we rely largely on ecotourism as our main source of income, and we realize full well that no one travels to Africa to come and see the big four and a half because we had to be on all the rhinos, um, that to us wasn't, wasn't an attractive alternative. We didn't want to, to be on our animals. A lot of trial and error involved. When we started um, almost two years ago, we didn't even know whether you could put anything into a rhino's horn. How would you get it in there? How would it stay there? What does it look like? What is the internal structure like? So it was um, a, a, a lot of learning involved for, for, for all of us. And we were, were very fortunate that we actually stumbled across research that was being done at the time and um, modified this research for our purposes and therefore turned it into, a, into an anti-poaching measure you would have seen uh, during the, the, the proce procedures yesterday. When you have to sedate an animal, especially an animal the size of a rhino, there's, a, there's some risk involved. So we try to offset that risk by doing as much as possible while the animal is on the ground. So not only would we be doing a horn infusion, which includes this this cocktail of um, of medicinal compounds, uh, but also an indelible dye, the same kind of dye that's used in the cash and transit industry to stain stolen banknotes which number one visibly identifies its horn as having been tampered with or contaminated and is therefore inadvisable for humans to consume. And number two also renders it to, uh, the, the horn useless for ornamental purposes. The reason that the, the compounds we use don't affect animals is because that's the reason they were chosen. Uh, they were 100% safe for animals because that's what they developed to do. It's something similar to, to putting frontline on your pets at home to protect them against ticks and fleas doesn't do anything to, to the animal, but if a human were to consume it, it would certainly be, um, be potent enough to, to, to cause some discomfort. We've been extremely fortunate and lucky that uh, of the almost 200 animals we have treated thus far to date, um, none of them have had their horns removed and have had them end up in any of the user countries at all. There is no silver bullet and there is no one solution and there is no blanket solution that will work for everyone. Um, across the board, but it is another arrow in the quiver.